How much do you think you know about ancient history? Perhaps that's the wrong question. How much can anybody truly know about ancient history? The past is a strange and distant place, and there are chasmic gaps in our knowledge of it. We're going to explore a few of those chasms with the discoveries in this video. Experienced archaeologists have seen a lot of things, so it's not always easy to impress them. When they describe a discovery as the find of a lifetime, it's usually worth listening to them. That's exactly how this passage tomb in Ireland has been described, and it's easy to see why. Located in County Meath, the monument has some of the most detailed and well-preserved pieces of Neolithic art ever found in Europe. With an age of approximately five and a half thousand years, it's likely that the tomb was built by some of the earliest farmers ever to work on the Irish land. The megalithic tomb is split into two separate burial chambers, both of which are extensively decorated with murals and carvings. The tombs sit below a large stone cairn and are surrounded by six strategically placed curbstones. Even the curbstones were well decorated. Building and maintaining the tombs was clearly a work of dedication and love by the people responsible for putting them together. The crazy thing about this discovery is that it comes from Brunaboyne World Heritage Site, a place that archaeologists are already supposed to have explored in full. Next up, we have the mystery of the Basil Papyrus. It's a 2,000-year-old papyrus covered in mirror writing on both sides, and it's so named because it's currently in the collection of the University of Basel in Switzerland. After years of careful study, Experts concluded in 2018 that it's likely to be a medical document written by none other than Gallus, the celebrated ancient Roman physician. The full papyrus collection is a complex piece of work. It has 65 pages and is written in five different languages. The other pages are unrelated to the two papyri that contain Gallus's writing, though and it's unknown how they ever ended up mixed up together in the first place. They've been in Basel since the 16th century. The papyri are too delicate to be rolled out and read in the conventional way. So, they've been scanned using infrared and ultraviolet light, thus making it possible to read the contents. It's a treatise on something that Gallen called hysterical apnea, the cessation of breathing during shock or treatment. Sadly, there isn't enough of the document left to tell us what the physician's thoughts on treatment were. Sticking to our Roman theme, a rare, fully intact Latin inscription was discovered during the excavation of the ancient former Thracian city of Cable in 2018. The old city isn't far from modern-day Cable, which is in Bulgaria. This is the first intact Roman inscription discovery in the region for more than 30 years, but in ancient times, the city had a very strong Roman presence. It was captured by Roman forces in the year 71 BCE and remained Roman until the Goths drove the Romans out in the 4th century. The inscription is etched into a marble slab and describes the construction of public baths in the city between the years 166 and 169. The baths were known as the Cable Thermae and were built by a Roman military unit that was based in the city at the time. The unit's commander, Elias Rufus, is the only individual named in the inscription, save for the city's governor, Claudius Marcialis. Until the slab and its inscription were found, historians in Bulgaria didn't know for sure when the Roman baths were built. This is a discovery that fills in a tiny gap. Excavations at Pompeii began in 1738 and are still ongoing today. It seems we'll never run out of fascinating things to find there. The most recent high-profile discovery is this ceremonial chariot which turned up at the site of a villa on the outskirts of the ancient site. The carriage is so well preserved that its original satyr, nymph, and cupid decorations are still clearly visible. Like everything else at Pompeii, 
The chariot has effectively been frozen in time since the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79. Whoever rode this chariot traveled in comfort and style. They had armrests and backrests in their seat atop four iron wheels. Chariots have been found in Pompeii before, but it's rare to find one that's so beautiful and so completely intact. The surrounding walls and ceilings collapsed as a result of the destruction caused by the volcano, but the chariot remained standing. The elaborate nature of the vehicle means it's unlikely to have been used for day-to-day -day transportation. It's far more likely that it was used for special occasions like weddings and festivals. In June 2018, Swiss construction workers were in the middle of creating an underground parking garage in the Canyon of Valais when they came across an enormous standing stone. They could have demolished it, but something persuaded them to stop work and take a closer look. It's a good job that they did. What they'd stumbled across was actually a 5,000-year-old megalithic tomb known as a dolmen. On reflection, perhaps they shouldn't have been surprised. The land they were working from isn't far from the Don Bosco Celtic burial grounds in Sion. It now seems likely that those burial grounds extend a lot further than archaeologists once thought they did. The dolmen eventually turned out to be home to the remains of hundreds of people, making this one of the largest prehistoric burial sites in all of Switzerland. Sadly, none of the standing stones bear any inscriptions. That means we're unlikely to ever find out the identities of any of the people buried here. But this was clearly a very significant site for whoever did the burying. Archaeologists have been on the hunt for more dolmens between here and the Don Bosco site ever since. When Mount Vesuvius erupted in the year 79, the residents of Pompeii had no warning. There was barely any time to flee, and most of the people caught in the volcanic eruption were frozen in time in the precise moment they were in when the ash fell upon them. A few managed to get away, though, which makes our next discovery all the more tragic. It's the remains of a man who appears to have successfully escaped the burning city only to perish when an enormous rock fell on his head. Archaeologists think the rock might have been a door jam. It wouldn't have been easy for the man to get away from the pyroclastic flow in the first place. An examination of his leg bones has revealed that he was dealing with a severe infection at the time of his death, so he wouldn't have been moving quickly. He certainly won't have been the only person to have lost his life in the panicked attempt to flee the chaos, but his death might well have been the most unfortunate. Luck really wasn't on his side that day. Let's move on to a set of gold rings which were found in a field in rural Ireland in 2018. The function of the rings is not yet known, but archaeologists and historians are fairly certain that they weren't designed to be worn as ornaments. The rings were found by a farmer in County Donegal by the name of Norman Whiterow while he was digging a drainage ditch on his land. When he first found them, they were covered in such a thick coating of clay that he couldn't even see that they were gold. He later took his finds to the Donegal County Museum, where head curator Caroline Carr described them as a once-in-a-lifetime find. She says the coiled rings are several thousand years old and are too large to be worn on a finger, yet too small to be worn around an arm or neck. One possibility is that they might have been used as a form of currency in the Bronze Age, although if that's the case, it's not a type of currency that's ever been found in Ireland before or since. You might think that archaeologists have found so many ancient Roman tombs that they're a little bored of them by now, but that isn't the case at all. In June 2018, they got very excited about the discovery of a spectacular 2,400-year-old chamber tomb in the city. The discovery was made during the construction of a new water pipeline. Fabio Truchetta, an archaeologist, had accompanied the dig, but wasn't expecting to find anything. Needless to say, he was shocked. The chamber was dug directly into the soft volcanic rock and sealed with limestone. Within it, Fabio found the remains of three adult men and one adult woman, 
all of whom were buried at different times. Two of the men were placed on high stone ledges. The other man and woman were curled up on the floor. This was probably a family tomb, but the significance of placing the bodies in such a way is unknown. The tomb has since become known as the Tomb of the Athlete, thanks to the presence of two iron strigils of the kind athletes in ancient Rome used to clean themselves after workouts. During the 10th century, Vikings arrived in Moray, Scotland, and did battle with the native Picts. During that battle, the Vikings burned down a Pictish hill fort known to archaeologists as Burghead. Preserving the fort would have been the furthest thing from their intentions at the time, but that's precisely what their fire did. Because of that, archaeologists have been able to put together the pieces of life inside the fort going back 300 years before the fire. This is both the largest and oldest ancient fort in Scotland. It was once a lot bigger than it is now, but the construction of the town of Burghead in 1805 destroyed about half of what was left of it. Even so, modern-day archaeologists have been able to identify a Pictish longhouse and the fort's defensive walls, and locate smaller artifacts like 9th century Anglo-Saxon coins. During the fort's heyday, the defensive wall would have been 20 feet high. It would have been an effective barrier, but there's nothing a wooden barrier can do about fire. Smaller discoveries include bronze rings, hairpins, dress pins, and charred human remains. Italian cuisine is considered to be among the finest in the world and is often cooked and served with lashings of olive oil. How long have Italians been cooking with olive oil? Well, based on this discovery from 2018, we can say it's been at least 4,000 years. Traces of the substance have been found inside this curious-looking egg-shaped ceramic jar, covered in starfish-like designs. It was found at the archaeological site of Castelluccio in Sicily, along with two other ancient vessels that have also been found to contain traces of the same liquid. The design of the jar is typical of the kind of Sicilian tableware that existed in the homes of people who lived during the Bronze Age. It's always been known that the tradition of using olive oil in cookery dates back thousands of years in Italy, but until these vessels were discovered, it was believed to have begun around 700 years later. It looks like they stored it in enormous quantities. This vase is three and a half feet tall, so presuming it was filled to the brim, it would have contained enough to keep a family going for quite some time. Ancient Greek Corinthian battle helmets were fairly fabulous pieces of headgear. They're also extremely rare discoveries, which is why this one is so exciting. It was found in southwest Russia's Taman Peninsula in September 2022, and is thought to be 2,500 years old. The helmet is badly broken, but it's retained its shape, and experts are confident that all of the individual pieces are there. It was found inside the tomb of an individual who's presumed to have been its owner. Greek Corinthian helmets like this are made of bronze and were designed to cover the entire head of the wearer. Slits are carved into them for the mouth and eyes, and the cheek covers protrude for the sake of comfort. There are also protrusions at the back to protect the nape of the neck. Some helmets, including this one, also had interior layers of fabric or leather, which made them more comfortable to wear, and also allowed for further protection of the skull. Such was the quality of the design that this model of helmet didn't fall out of favor until the first century, some 600 years after it was invented. When mummy discoveries happen, they usually happen in Egypt. Mummy discoveries in Peru are rarer but not unheard of. Mummy discoveries in Peru that come in bundles, though, are practically unheard of. In May 2018, a research team in Lima, Peru found a 1,000-year-old mummy bundle in what was described as near-perfect condition. The discovery took place in the already well-established archaeological site of Pachacamac. It's a near-miraculous find because Pachacamac was so extensively looted by raiders during times of antiquity. 
We don't even know the name of the culture that these mummies belong to. All we can say for sure is that they came before the Inca. They wrapped their dead up in bundles like this, usually including not only the remains of the deceased, but a collection of grave goods contained within layers of elaborate wrapping. It was initially hoped that the age, gender, health, and perhaps even the cause of death of this individual would be possible to ascertain, but that turned out to be too much to ask for. It's well preserved, but not immaculate. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!